Alrighty, I'm going to start with my oil and gas notes and take out the key rules from the cases that we covered, as well as some uh, covering some vocabulary terms from the first class. So, starting off, uh, oil and gas. There's various ways of doing the oil and gas mining. There's horizontal drilling, which is going straight down. Then there's the uh, slanted, uh, or excuse me, there's vertical uh, drilling where you go straight down and uh, slanted. Uh, I guess it, or yeah, slanted uh, ver or vertical drilling, and then there's horizontal drilling uh, that especially is often used with uh, fracking, and I have diagrams in my notes for that, for those types. Uh, so let's start off uh, rules. The Del Monte case uh, came up uh, and stands for the ad coleum doctrine. Basically, this says you own Black Acre in fee. In ad coleum, you have everything from heaven to hell, and you own it in fee. And that's the rule in Texas. Um, it also stands for the idea of severance. You have the right to be able to sever the the, the top land where, where you know, you know the, the generally where we consider you know the real property, the houses and everything, from the mineral rights which is beneath. So you can sever that that property ownership. And there's pros and cons to this. There's the 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 if the gov uh, to pri so this is the idea of private ownership and the the pros to cons to uh, uh, pri uh, uh, so if the government owns them they can use the proceeds for lower taxes financial gain for the government if the privates they can be more efficiently and developed so there's two ownership theories and the first one is ownership in place theory it means you own the physical rock in the ground ownership of the rock you can choose to lease it to an oil and gas company or not. And then there's the non-ownership theory, which is it doesn't allow you, uh, doesn't, you don't own oil and gas under your land, just have exclusive rights to captures by operation. That's dominion and control until clock exclusive right to capture. So now we go uh, to the rule of capture where everything revolves around this. Now it's important to remember the Pearson v. Post case was the Fox case. Two guys are pursuing the Fox First day of property class, two guys are pursuing the fox in uh, New York. Uh, w one of them is uh, in pursuit, and the other one actually catches the fox. Now, the question is, who owns the fox? And the Supreme Court of the United States decided that the person who actually caught the fox, not the person who was in pursuit of the fox, owned the fox. Just because you're in pursuit doesn't mean you own it. So the policy behind that is it encourages, um, I guess, exploration, but I'm thinking more specifically of a rule of capture. Rule of capture can be shown in the Kelly v. Ohio case. Facts of the Kelly v. Ohio case from 1897. Basically, your uh, guy's drilling gas well on the property line, right on the property border line, but does not cross the line at all. What happens is he's sucking, He's I think he's doing a vertical, uh, regardless, he's not crossing the, bar, uh, the property line, but there's a huge shale uh, or, or well underneath uh, the, his property and his neighbor's property, and he's sucking all the minerals out. And this uh, uh, allows, it's like a milkshake. He sucks up all the minerals, and some of them come from underneath the neighbor's property line. Question is, did he trespass, you know, or, or who owns that oil? that he, he drilled out. And the rule is ownership in place theory says the owner owns the rock in its place and the rock taking to produce it. So the reasoning is you have the right to do with, what, with, with your land and there's a huge broad rule of capture. Basically you can suck it up as long as you don't trespass. And this goes to the, the reasoning of they used to think of oil and gas as rivers or wild animals. You've got to catch it. So the policy is exploration. It was a wild animal. It may not be here tomorrow, and it forces people to ex explore. Now, there's some contrary to this policy is that there's incentive to create waste. You know, you're trying to beat the oil. You're drilling to, uh, despite the market, uh, and then there might not even be a market, and uh, it might be physical waste of minerals as well. So it's the Pearson v. Post logic. You you know you are capturing the wild animal, which they, we, they used to think that oil was kind of, they called it feral natural, so it's, it's like the feral animal. Wild animal is running around, uh, just it, whoever catches it, it's theirs. So here's, uh, th now there's uh, several limitations. Now the limitations are trespass. If you physically trespassed onto the property, that shouldn't happen. And in the Kelly v. Ohio case, that didn't happen. He did not physically trespass. He just kind of sucked the minerals with his 
uh, drilling rig. And then negligence or willful misconduct, not a problem. Uh, or excuse me, it is a, it is a big problem. You, know, you, you can't do that. It's a limitation of the rule of capture. Nuisance, waste, violating the rules of conservation agency, that's police power right there. And if you violate the oil and gas lease, if you've ex executed an oil and gas lease, if you violated it, that's a huge problem. And then uh, interfering uh, or interfering with uh, neighbor's correlative rights. There's several types of protection. Spacing, number of wells per acre, density is similar to that. Texas rule is actually 467 feet away from each other's land, so that's a density and spacing limitation. And then there's proration, how much you get per day. Um, so the Texas Railroad Commission is established to make sure everyone's correlative rights are protected. So what about hydraulic fac fracturing? Well, the, a great case, specifically very relevant to Texas, uh, or it, it's great for pointing out the rule. Uh, and uh, Anyway, uh, the Coastal B. Garza case, uh, very important, is that Coastal owns, it's very complicated, so there, there's some tracks, and um, basically there's some fracturing going on, very complicated case, it's very difficult to read, and uh, so in that case, it's, it's not really great, but, it, but the rule is important, and that's why it's a very important case. The, the case is that it, it, it's very complicated, but basically there, there were there, no trespass, except there was fracturing going on. The, the, the little the well drig rig thing didn't cross into the boundary, but the fracture lines did. Question, was that trespass? Yes, but in trespass for torts and such, the question is, uh, you, let's say you pick up some sand and you throw it onto your neighbor's land. Technically trespass. However, are there damages? Is that an actionable trespass? No, unless there's some sort of issue, clean up, well, who knows. But just a little bit of sand, it's trespass, but it's not actionable. Uh, and so uh, the question, and so the issue that we want to focus on in this uh, Garza, or Coastal V. Garza case is rule capture, trespass, and fracturing. And the, the rule was that established that rule capture protects hydraulic fracturing because it's not an actionable trespass. My analogy or my professor's analogy was it's like throwing sand so onto another person's sur surface. There's no injuries, no damage because of the rule of capture. Uh, the concurring opinion is probably easier to read and the dissenting opinion is much easier to read as well. Uh, the the, the there are four reasons that the Supreme Court of Texas gave for this, and it was premise rule capture, you can drill on your own property. You don't want to reserve the Railroad Commission. You know, you don't want the, the Supreme Court stepping over to the Railroad Commission. Uh, they, they weren't equipped to, to determine the value of drainage, evidence of the deep earth to prove difficult, cannot take into account the social policy industry. And then also, I mean, I, I don't even know if I want to mention this, but my goodness, um, that, that doesn't want to change it because the industry doesn't want it. My professor said this was unbelievable fourth reasoning, so that's why we should read the concurring bit. But the most important thing is basically just know that it's, it's, it is trespass, but it's not actionable trespass. That's really all we need to know, the little fracturing line. Right, let's go to People's Gas v. Tyner. All right, uh, open up the land to fracking. This is, this is an old case, but it, it's very interesting. Uh, and, and for other reasons, side details. Uh, open up the uh, People's Gas v. Tyner. Open up the area to fracking after blowing up the land. Tyner wants to get an injunction to stop the gas company from throwing TNT into there. The, uh, the court reasons you got to have the right to send a high amount of TNT to shoot the well. You have the right to increase production, even TNT, except if it in hinges on the safety and other limitations of uh, somebody else. So you can you can shoot TNT in there uh, back in the 1800s, early 1900s, but it, it, as long as it doesn't uh, you, know, you know it's not nuisance, it, it doesn't get to correlative rights. Next case, Ronsky versus Sun Oil Corporation. Plaintiffs own several tracts of land. Sun Oil is the defendant, and this is in Michigan. Michigan regulations, one uh, well per 20 acres, 75 barrels a day, which is proration. So that, that's the Michigan uh, police power, and, and they're, they're doing their thing, and, and those are the rules. So 
Sun Oil overproduced a thousand five, uh, well, excuse me, 150,000 barrels over, and they proved that 50,000 was from his property one third. Proved that 50,000 barrels were produced off his land. So the the court reasoned that the rule of capture doesn't protect Sun Oil because they breached the correlative rights based off Michigan's uh, p police power rules. So. Normally, if, uh, if there were no regulations such as these, then the rule of capture would not have, uh, it, it would have protected Suncoast. So let's say Michigan, you know, has a, a different, and they didn't violate any of the police powers of, of the Michigan uh, oil industry, then everything would be okay. But since they did, because they overproduced, and it's based on trespass, this was a trespass, specifically conversion, and uh, you, there, and uh, so that's that. Now that's the da that's the that's the cause. Now what's the remedy? There's two types. Willful trespasser means the uh, the person is liable for the market value at the time of conversion, the t meaning the time it was produced, without expenses or improvements by labor. That means you don't get the off offset. This means you make the landowner whole. The second type of damages is the more milder one, the innocent trespasser, the market value of oil offset by a reasonable cost of labor production. That's off, offset production, okay? So willful trespasser, liable for market value at the time of conversion, without expenses or improvements by labor. You don't get the offset. Two, innocent trespasser, market value of the office offset by reasonable cost of labor and production, um, labor production, offset production. So. That's good. That's the two ways you can assess damages. Now, let's go uh, ownership after production. So it's already been produced. What does that mean? Well, just to set it out, once it comes out of the ground and it's been in a contained area, it's uh, personal property, no longer real property. Different rules apply. Let's look at the Chaplin versus uh, Exploration versus Western Bridge. Facts, defendant already refined and drilled, leaks onto other person's land. There's a, you know, uh, the other person builds a, a very creative, builds a, a trench to put all the oil into the bucket, you know, it has a creek of oil, uh, black gold coming into his property. And uh, so the question is, uh, who owns the oil? So the rule is personal property must be abandoned. What is the classification of a mineral once it's produced? Personal property. So once it comes out of the ground, it's personal property. Once the person has established control, it's personal property. In order to lose personal property, you must show elements of abandonment. The analysis. Here, there was no abandonment. It just leaked over. So just because I'm walking, uh, you know, I accidentally dropped my watch on your lawn, it's not yours. I haven't abandoned it yet, unless you can show the elements of abandonment. But if you can't, then it's not abandoned. And here, there, were no, uh, there was no abandonment. So the question, do you have a cause of action against Western? Well, the oil creek is going across your yard, so you probably have action for trespass, you know, probably cleaning it up, nuisance, trespass, got to clean it up. So that's that. So that's, that shows the rule that property must be abandoned. Now, let's go to Texas American Energy Corporation versus Citizens uh, Fidelity Bank and Trust, 1987. All right, so this is, this is a great case. It uh, intertwines all sorts of law. It's uh, UCC uh, 9 type of, uh, so UCC type of case, UCC 9 type of case. So basically, Texas, uh, Texas uh, American Energy got a loan with Citizens, $24 million from TAME. So basically, there's kind of this, you know, you give me uh, some oil, we'll price from the loan. A citizen loans $24 million to the TAME to buy gas. They buy gas to put it in empty reservoirs. These are often coal mines, things of that nature. And what did the citizen, uh, what did citizen file to secure their interest? They did a UCC filing statement. They didn't do a mortgage. We don't know exactly why. It was probably money. There was a fee, cost, or somebody didn't know they had to file a mortgage. So they didn't file a mortgage. So they just made a financing statement. Well, that has some implications, doesn't it? Issue, did they have to file a mortgage in this case? It classifies as an inventory. Uh, gas stored is considered good, so it's personal property. But stored gas is considered goods, meaning inventory personal property, because it's a defined containment. But once it leaks, it becomes real property, because it is not a defined container. So that's interesting. Once it leaks, it becomes uh, real property. So once it's leaking, it's subject to the rule of capture again. Alrighty, so uh, let's go to the, the vocabulary lessons. You've got to understand these words, very important. Um, 
so severance, you can split the land from the owner and yourself, and th that's good to go. What are the characteristics of being a, uh, a mineral owner, a land owner? Think of the bundle of sticks. You have the right to ingress and egress, the right to go on and off. I can use as much of the surface as reasonably necessary to develop the minerals. Policy, without this theory, we can never develop the minerals. The exclusive right to development is the development's right. If you own it, then you can develop it, subject to the rule of capture. If the right to, uh, to develop the minerals, which carries it with the obligation to pay the cost of the development, you got the executive right, wh whoever owns it, also rights to convey proceeds. You got your bonuses, compensation for granting the oil lease, delays, rentals, compensation for deferring drilling, and royalty, share of production, very important. Uh, and then you can give away the sticks and you can break them up. We're going to learn some big fractions this summer semester. All right, leasehold interest. Uh, interest granted in a lessee. If you execute at least one time, I'm working interest owner. Fee simple, determinable conveyance, not under landlord tenant. It is a simple fee. Get all the sticks except for the money stick. Royalty interest, you got your landowners created by leases. Very common fraction is one eighth. Non, not surface owner. Overriding royalty interest, interest of royalty that is carved out of the working uh, interest owner free of production cost payment to work on the well document under signing uh, <coughs> grantee from working interest holder. <coughs> Excuse me. An example is 3% of the working interest as long as the well produces. Non-participating royalty interest, NPRI, carved out of landowner royalty, OORI, overriding ro uh, royalty interest owner. Uh, or interest. Uh, do, do not participate in bonus rentals when you lease expires in PRI. When you add it up, it should be 100% of the fractions. And that's going to be it. Vocabulary I know with that, we're going to spend a lot of time with it this semester.